Hey, welcome back to Mixed Media Salad, a channel created for you by you. I am your host, Ronnie McBride, and today we're going to be covering stroke brushes. In a previous video, I did a demonstration on creating your own custom smoke brush. And if you did not see that video, definitely look down in the description and you'll find a link to that video. You definitely want to check that out if you want to learn how to make your own custom pixel based brushes. But this week we're going to focus on the draw persona and we're going to look at making our own stroke brushes. And if I draw out a shape here, I'm going to go ahead and just draw a square, a simple square. And I'm just going to get rid of the fill because we're not focused on that. And if you look over here in your brush palette, you have all these basic brush shapes, okay? And you could change the look of your brush based on these options here that have been already created for you, and they come default with uh, Affinity Designer. Now, if you go down here, you'll see that there's some other brushes here, and they're a little bit different, okay? And what makes them different is the fact that they're actually based on images okay so we're going to use an image to create our own um, custom st stroke brush okay so um, these down here this is an image based brush I'm not going to focus on that this week I, I, I think after I go through this demonstration you'll have a good idea of how to create your own image based brush you really have to use your your imagination on some of those things I mean they could be you know, uh, picture frames or anything like that. But what we're going to focus on is creating a custom um, texture intensity brush. Okay. And the reason why we want to use that sort of brush is because that brush will allow us to change the color of the brush that we're creating. Okay. So some of these other brushes, they, they don't allow us to change the color in the same way. Okay. Because they're based on actual images. So with that being said, Let's go over here. I have a little file set up. I'm going to turn that off for now. And I'm going to show you a brush that I made. Okay. So this is a simple brush. One of the problems that some people were running into was that they're used to having brushes um, like in Illustrator where you can actually um, have different heads and different tails to the brush and use them for like, you know, drawing out diagrams or working on blueprints or and stuff and uh, things like that but unfortunately um on this first version of affinity designer we don't have that option in here but it is definitely coming in the future but in the meantime we need to figure out a way that we could actually have that sort of thing within affinity designer and you can do that by making your own custom stroke brush okay so right here i'm defining what i what i want to be as a, a stroke okay and so i have a head area which is just a triangle there's a stem and then then there's the tail okay i want this to be white because it's an intensity brush and basically what the uh texture intensity brush does is it looks at the uh the brightest part of an image and it uses that to blend with um colors so if you want to select like if i wanted my line my stroke to be red green or blue it would definitely have to be an intensity brush to be able to do that okay so it'll make more sense when I uh, show you guys um, how to how the brush actually works so I have just a simple circle here a triangle and then a line here that's defining my brush my document dimensions is 1024 by 1024 and that's just because I wanted to make a, a, a big brush you can make it bigger or smaller it's really up to you okay but what we'll do is we'll take this after we've drawn out our brush on our background here, white, white in the foreground of our brush stroke image, and then black in the background, okay? And we go to export, and we export out a PNG. And you'll see that I have some other brushes in here, so I would just dump that in here. But right now, I already have a copy of that. I just wanted to show you, okay? And what we'll do is we're going to go ahead and we're going to turn this layer back on. And I'm going to turn this layer off. I'm going to go ahead and just delete that here. And I don't need this pixel layer here. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to go over to our brush strokes. And I already created a category called Ronnie's Arrow Brush. Okay, and you'll see I have all these different types of brushes in here. Okay, so now I'm going to take my pen tool. I'm going to draw a line. 
like so. And then I'm gonna go ahead and apply one of these uh, brushes to it, okay? Now you see my arrows are actually here, and that's based on that same image that I imported, okay? Now, let me show you how to import the brush, which I didn't show you, and that's actually more important right now. If I go to New Texture Intensity Brush, this is what I would click to create my new brush, okay? And so um, let me show you what happens when you when you actually create a new texture uh, intensity brush. So this would be the image that we exported, okay? And I'm just gonna say open, and it's gonna come in default like this, okay? Now, I just clicked on it, my line was still selected, and you see that it's kind of stretched, right? Um, we're gonna correct that in the brush editor. We're gonna define how we want this brush to work. Okay, so you see that it's stretched, right? If you go down here and you hit repeat, now you see that my image is repeated along this line, okay? And I still could change the size of it, you know, and it'll, it'll all fit in there. But what we wanna do is we wanna define what part is the head, what part is the center, and then what part is the tail of the image, okay? So watch what happens as I drag these lines here. And that's these two sections, these two parameters, you could actually drag them here too, okay? Right. So this is my line, okay? If I zoom in here, you're gonna see something else here. Um, you see this like weird little gnarly thing sometimes, and that's because you see like that that's off. If you import your image and you get that sort of thing, that's because you need to change your cap. Okay, and once you change your cap, now it. Now it's exactly how, how we uh, defined it originally, okay? So there we go, we have, our, we have our brush, right? And what makes it so powerful and so cool now is the fact that now I could draw this line however I want, right? Hit escape and I'm gonna go ahead and create a new line here. And now I could actually curve this line uh, because I'm making a new line I, I had um, I have to just make sure that I select the brush that I want to use and so now I can use my you know my bezier tools you know to change that form okay so that gives me a lot of flexibility okay so that's basically the power of a stroke brush I mean you could use any shape that you want um, that makes sense you know if it's like a picture frame that you want to create um, you know, you could use it in the same, same manner, defining, you know, the front and the end points and the center area, and you could just make all sorts of different types of strokes. Okay. Now, one more thing I want to show you is how to use this stroke. Okay. Because, um, I think a lot of people didn't realize that you could do this sort of thing with Affinity Designer. And I know that somebody was looking for a way to create their own arrow brush. Um, they, they almost didn't even buy the application because they couldn't find where they could actually just, you know, create an arrow so they could put in a diagram or, you know, or, you know, some sort of chart they were working on or whatever. And, um, you know, and I created this brush for them and you could actually uh, get this brush in the forum, in the resource section. I've actually put that brush in there. But now that you guys know how to make it, you don't even need to download it and import it or anything because you know how to make these, your, these brushes yourself. Now, let me show you the power of these brushes uh, in another way that I think is more useful to you so you get a good understanding of why you would want to do this sort of thing. Here I have this image that I created all in Affinity Designer. It's completely vector, and it's of a thermostat. Um, I think it's called the Nest. It's very popular here in the U.S. I don't know if it's popular in uh, in Europe or uh, anywhere else right now. But um, you know, I actually illustrated this all in Affinity Designer, so this is all all vector. So what I want to show you is I actually created a blueprint version of it. Okay. Let me just back out of this so you guys can see. And I did my dimensionings all with those types of brushes. So that gives you an idea of how you could use those brushes 
in the, you know, in the same sort of way. If you're an architect or, you know, industrial designer or something like that, and you need to do dimensioning in your illustration, um, of course, it's not like accurate, accurate. Um, but if it's for illustration purposes, I think it, it, it does the job, right? Now, if you have, um, for instance, this certain area here, if you actually select these lines, and let's say you want the arrow to be on the opposite side, well, that's very simple. Because this is a stroke brush, and our origin was originally was clicked uh, started here by clicking here, then clicking this point, then clicking that point, we define the direction of that line. All we have to do is go up here into our actions, reverse the direction, and now it's on the opposite side. So if you um, so you don't have to go and create you know two different types of brushes facing left and right when you could just do it like that. So here's a double, double, the uh, double ended brush here. Because it's an intensity brush, remember now, I could change the color to whatever I want as well. Um, you know, that's, that's pretty much it. You know, so if you have any questions, guys, send me uh, a tweet at Mixed Media Salad. You can catch me on the forums. And if you really like these tutorials, I'd really love your support. Definitely subscribe. And um, any links that I uh, spoke about within this video, you'll definitely find it in the description below. And also, um, if you guys like Affinity Designer and you want to get up to speed as quickly as possible on how to use the tool, I actually am teaching a course. And that link will actually be as well below in the description. Okay? Thanks again, guys, for watching. I will see you next week. And that's it for now. If you like this video and you found it helpful, please hit the subscribe button.